After searching YouTube for ideas, I came up with this flood and drain system. With a square and a measuring tape, mark off your center points of the basket holes. Now turn it over and mark the drain hole. Here I'm determining where to cut the 3 quarter inch drain pipe. My hole saw doesn't match the 1 inch plus outside diameter pipe, so I'll route it out with a grinding bit to make it fit. I found this square fence post and end caps, PVC pipe, pump, timer, and other parts at Lowe's and Home Depot. With a 3 inch hole saw, I drilled the first basket hole. I found that it works best to drill a pilot hole before using the hole saw. And don't forget those safety glasses. I found it was much easier with my old core drill. The 3 inch diameter requires a lot of torque. Cutting the drain pipe with a miter saw is more accurate and much easier, but you could get by with a hacksaw. Here I'm going to cut the pipe fittings by slicing off a piece of the fitting. Notice that I put the fitting on the pipe to keep my hands away from the blade. These slices will be glued on the pipe like nuts on a bolt. Now I'll cut the overflow drain piece. When assembled, it will fit in the hole and provide an overflow at the top. Now it's time to assemble them with the PVC glue. Here's where I made my mistake. Stop. Don't put glue on the bottom ring. Turn it over and just put it on the pipe. It started to set immediately as it is supposed to and I had a difficult time getting it tight. I did manage to turn it with pliers and channel locks and snug it up to the bottom. A quarter inch drain hole is drilled here so the tank can drain completely, but it's too slow to keep up with the pump. For the inflow, I chose to install a fitting to keep it all nice and neat and uh, secure. It'd be a whole lot easier just to drill a hole and stick the tubing in and put some glue on it. I bought a sprinkler fitting and found a plumbing fitting with the same thread and made it into two nuts to hold the fitting in place. Drilling the hole requires a variable speed drill to make it smooth for this kind of bit. If I had the right size drills and saws for these holes it would be a whole lot better, but plumbing parts have some odd sizes. I can adjust the water level by cutting different lengths of pipe to go here. The water solution will rise to the top, flooding the roots. When the timer turns off the pump, the water will drain out the quarter inch hole at the bottom, thus producing a flood and drain system. Here I decided to use hot melt glue on the end cap so I can remove them for cleaning at the end of a cycle. Now it's time to test the system. I found that I needed a minimum of 300 gallons per hour pond pump to get the height and flow that I need. 
Since I'm using this outdoors in the summer, I'll cut holes in the 18 gallon tote with the drill on a block of wood. That gives it a nice clean cut. To get the plug through, I had to make cuts around the hole. A tight fit keeps the daylight out of the tank. I set the system up in the yard on a stand I built out of scrap wood and then painted it green. I then found it was getting up to 115 degrees inside in the hot July sun. So I attached pieces of Varmax to reflect the light. It still gets up to 100 inside, but everything seems to be working. The yellow squash here is an experiment. The butter crunch lettuce got this size in about two weeks. The system is best suited for lettuce. Well, I hope this gives you some ideas on how to build your own system.